Hello friends, happy to welcome all of you here um, on this cozy yet a bit rainy in Kiev, particularly December evening. We have a last live event of this year, so I wanted to start my speech with a huge thank you to, to all of you for being with us this uh, those months, for being today, and um, hope to see you again on our live events next year. Uh, thinking about the final annual event, I wanted to pick some really practical thing and to share real life experience. So today I want to bring a light um, one important topic that is still undoubtedly popular among sales and marketing people, um, even despite the fact that it is being widely described and discussed over the internet, but I still see a lot of questions like this on the forums, um, in the commentaries on social media. So. How can I scale my outreach efforts? How can I send many emails, like literally thousands of emails without getting into spam or being blocked? And of course, how can I increase my open rate? Because the higher the open rate is, the more chances that you will get a reply from your prospect. Um, and of course, there is a little stance in your efforts if your open rate is below five or 10%. So I thought it would be a great idea to share um, to cover this quite extensive topic and to share our expertise because behind our own successful experience with scaling our cold outreach, there is a huge teamwork and a long road full of ups and downs. So today we're going to talk about the milestones of the email outreach and discuss the ways to make your cold email campaigns a success and increase the open rate of your emails. So for those who have joined us for the first time, just a super quick intro about myself. So I'm Maria and I work at Closely, a sales intelligent platform. My overall experience in sales spans over six years and I've been dealing both with B2C and B2B businesses. And prior to Closely, I've been working for IO Technologies, which is analytical uh, solution for digital publishers. So I used to do a lot of cold outreach there. And what I want today is to share the best practices in our experience experience that allow us to send. Um, I brought 50,000 emails on this topic, but actually we sent quite bigger amounts, quite bigger numbers um, without a chance like being blocked or moving into spam. Uh, moreover, we get really high open rates with our emails, so I will cover this in details a bit later. So today we're gonna talk about uh, setting up the accounts and warming them up, warming your inboxes up, uh, ways to find the right audience, ways to find the right contacts and increase your open rate, and what influences the email deliverability in how to avoid being blocked or marked as spam. Uh, let's start. And we'll start with setting up the accounts and inboxes warm up. So let's start from the scratch and speak a little bit about the limits because the main reason you cannot send millions of emails at once is because your email service provider gives you a certain email uh, sending limit. So trying to exceed this limit frequently brings your email account under observation. And Next, I will speak in particular about the um, Google Workspace. Uh, this is the service we've been used for Oracle, uh, our outreach, but this is not just Google policy because this happens with other email service providers like Outlook, Yahoo, Microsoft Exchange, and others. So each of them have their own limits and make sure to learn them prior considering some kind of this uh, service, some kind of this email service provider. So basically Google imposes a limit to how many emails each Gmail user can send from their account in every 24 hour period. If you use your account only for, I would say like personal mailing uh, for the ba basic mailing needs, uh, that's usually not a problem. But in case if you want to send mass email outreach through your Gmail or Google Workspace account, uh, you need a way around those limits. So Gmail sets a rate limit of 20 ongoing emails per hour, which means you cannot exceed, you simply cannot exceed this number. And if you try to exceed this, Google might suspend your account as a suspicious activity. So if you, but if you are just trying to gradually and step-by-step step increase those numbers, then Google may tolerate this increase. Just do not try to send um, 
massive amount of emails at once and just not to try not to try, try not to schedule it uh, all of them uh for one i would say for one hour for example everything from 10 a.m to 11 a.m but we will cover also this in details a bit later um, anything you send to external recipients from an alias address, email address, I mean, uh, this will also will be counted toward this limit, as well as all of your um, mailing through your account connected to your phone, for example. So everything will be counted into those limits. And for, as I already mentioned, for individual Gmail accounts, which is basically free accounts, uh, the daily sent limit is 500 emails per roll in 24 hours. Uh, for Google Workspace account, this is our like system we have in place. This is formerly G Suite. Um, the daily send limit is 2,000 emails per rolling 24-hour period per email address. So those accounts are usually they are for business and they operate um, under the company domain. So such as, for example, closelyhq.com, uh, but they use the same Gmail uh, policies, the same Gmail uh, technology as the free one as well. So if you're sending a bulk um, email campaign and you have a large customer um, or prospect group, you have a huge list, then obviously those 2,000 email sending limit won't be enough for you, won't meet your needs. That's because, um, like with the individual account, each email that will be sent to your recipient will be counted separately. So if one email, for example, is addressed to 5,000 uh, recipients, it will be counted as 5,000 emails. So if you exceed th those limits, both uh, one hour limit or 24 hour limits, um, your account may be suspended. You can still access your mailbox, you can still access some basic functions like uh, calendar or or another services from Google, but you won't be able to send and uh, receive messages during this period. So at this point, you might ask, how can I send more than 500 or 2000, depends on your uh, type of the account you've been using emails per day. So there are a few ways. Uh, with the with the Gmail services. One is to create a Google group, uh, which is, has also some limitations because you can um, include only up to 100 emails, up to 100 recipients in this case. But this is um, a great way if you have some small groups of recipients that are united by some common interest, uh, or maybe they know each other, or maybe they are united by some um, activity or interest or team or club, etc. So it doesn't work for every audience, but in case if this is appropriate, this is a great way to avoid, you know, like spending those credits, those uh, Gmail credits. So you can put up to 100 um, email addresses in a group and the email that was sent to this group will be counted only as one email, although it will be sent and received by all 100 recipients. The other way is to um, use multiple accounts. So you can establish more than one authorized Google or a Gmail or a Google Workspace um, account. So each will be working within its own limits. So for example, if I have an account like Maria Bilic, um, closely HQ.com and I have the second account, Bilic Maria, closely HQ.com, then I will be able to send emails from both accounts under my, uh, my, my name. And in this case, I will be under the limit of uh, 500 plus 500, or alternatively, if I use paid account, 2000 plus 2000. In this case, I'm receiving much um, bigger numbers available for the outreach. So, um, in this case, I would recommend to divide your recipients into smaller groups and send your bulk emails separately to each mailing list. And this means that, of course, you have to monitor a few inboxes and you have to be aware that this will uh, require some time from you. So just, just make sure you have um, enough time to process all of the mailboxes that you are creating to expand your outreach. And the third way to increase the number of the external recipients is by using a SMTP relay service and connect your account to a third party service so you can send your emails using external email service providers, um, like SendPools, for example. This is one of the most common uh, providers. The email uh, sending limits posted by, by your post by your provider, um, they are for all messages sent from your address. This is why if you have several follow-ups scheduled in your campaign, for example, you have one initial message and you have 
four follow-ups to follow. Uh, you should keep in mind that after a few days or a week depends on the time delays that you have between your messages, not only your first touch email will be scheduled, will be queued and scheduled during a particular day or particular period of time, but also there will be follow-ups um, that will be counted towards this, this overall number of the emails. So the same goes for sending, for example, for launching few campaigns from the single email address. Um, also, keep in mind that you have to leave some room for your regular messaging, for your regular correspondence. For example, if you schedule 2,000 emails per day, um, in this case, you simply won't have a chance even to respond to somebody because you already spent your credits. So I would recommend to leave at least 50 or 100. It depends upon the activity of your regular messaging. Um, leave the number, uh, the following number of the emails for free usage, for just for mailing between you and your maybe um, interested prospects or just your regular customers. And although different email services uh, offer different limits, um, of course, you should, you should think about the final goal, you should think about the final numbers, how many people would you like to reach and what kind of conversions would you like to get in percentage uh, before considering the, the vendor. But just keep in mind that the best way to manage um, email outreach, cold email outreach, is through the um, I would say CRM that will allow you with uh, that will also provide you with the opportunity to um, to add different different related benefits like maybe advanced personalization, scheduling emails, uh, also connecting your calendar, for example, personalized attachments, etc. So this is basically the best way to manage your outreach campaigns, just using just one single solution. Uh, basically, for in our case. We've been using uh, Google Workspace uh, and Outreach.io as a platform for the cold outreach. I also covered here Warm Up Inbox as the tool that we've been used for warming our inboxes and ZoomInfo as the main database, but we will cover those tools and the alternatives also later a little bit. So basically this combination, Google Workspace and Outreach.io allowed us to send um, allowed us to send up to one uh, 5,000 uh, emails per week, uh, basically for three accounts, so, uh, team of three, because we've been working, our sales team consists of three people, consisted basically. And we also manage all the records in one place, so there is no need to use any kind of external service. We've been doing everything through Outreach.io. And I would like to say that those numbers, 50,000 emails per month, uh, they were fully determined by the capacity of our sales team. So, of course, uh, just speaking about the uh, limits of the Gmail, of uh, Google Workspace, and of the limits that uh, Outreach.io allows you to send the emails with him, we are able to get much higher numbers, and you will be also able to get much higher numbers. This is just our example because we were limited, um, you know, on human resources because we need to manage all of this, uh, all the stuff, answers. We had to answer also to the prospect, so this was our experience. But um, as you can see, as, as you can realize from the beginning of my speech, uh, the RA much greater opportunities uh, in terms of the available emails to send. Uh, I mean, if you've been using the right tool and if you are still would like to play, you know, under the limits game. So, of course, um, what I would like to say here is once you have considered your goals, when you have um, already clear numbers in mind and you know exactly um, how many resources do you have for handling all the outreach, this will be the time for you to uh, to check the capabilities of different platforms and to choose the one that will suit you best for this. Um, now let's speak a little bit more about the technical part with our step-by-step -step guide that I prepared for you. And the first thing we will start with setting up accounts and inboxes warm up. And the first thing you need to do is to choose between the two types of the email providers. Is this a paid provider? Like just use, for example, uh, Google Workspace in our case, or is this a should be this a free provider? It depends 
on the numbers of your outreach. So sometimes you can stay under the limits of the free providers, but in case if you would like to send literally thousands of emails, um, it makes sense for you to consider also paid solutions. Um, also choosing paid providers um, adds a little, makes your outreach, make your emails a little bit more trustworthy because they are being sent from the corporate domains. And um, this will also increase your deliverability rate in this case. Um, you can use your primary domain for the mass outreach or alternatively you can set up um, another email address on another domain if you're uh, just afraid that your outreach requires a lot of experimenting and uh, you are afraid just to you know um, to hit bad badly reputation of your main domain uh, one crucial thing in my to keep in mind however is that an email address on a newly set up um, domain should be not used for outbound uh, out for the outbound emailing immediately so at least uh, three weeks should have passed before you can use um, the newly created mailbox the newly create on the newly created domain for the cold outreach. So it, it need to be properly warmed up and it need to exist at least one month or three weeks. So regardless of what you prefer, paid or free account, uh, there are a few general tips uh, for your email address just to be, you know, like human-like and um, to add you a little bit more points to your uh, towards your outreach efforts. So the first thing is about, um, of course, being a human person. And by being a human person, I mean that you should use your personal name and your surname. Um, your email address should also be nominative. So for example, it should be Maria Bilik, uh, closelyhq.com, something like this. Just for the sender's name, um, try not to use a company name. I mean, just like closely HQ and then again, closelyhq.com. So try to use your first, uh, first name and last name in your email. Also try to avoid different exotic extensions. Uh, of course, they seem spammy, it's quite obvious. And um, the last thing um, that will add a little bit more credibility to your email, just um, add a profile picture to your account, to your Google account. Also, if you want, uh, you can add, and you, you, you would like to gain more trust, you can add uh, this email address to your profile on LinkedIn as an additional one. So it will be also related to your LinkedIn profile and will show that you are a really um, a real person. Sorry. <coughs> so the next part of this process wraps around uh, technical things. And here are a few essential points that significantly influence the email's deliverability. So the first one <coughs> is the sender policy framework. So it prevents wrongdoers uh, from sending any emails on your behalf. Uh, sender policy framework defines and verifies the EP addresses that are allowed to send emails from your domain. Uh, without sender policy framework, messages sent from your organization or domain are more likely to be marked as spam by receiving mail services. <coughs> Excuse me. Another one is to um, is about domain keys identified mail. So this is another layer of protection that says to the receiving server that it's okay, I'm really the person um, who is sending this message. So uh, this technology, domain keys identified ma mail, use the encrypted signature to verify that the email sender, <coughs> <coughs> my apologies, <coughs> As I said, it's raining and I again caught some flu. <coughs> uh, so yeah, um, the main keys identified mail uh, gives the key to the sender recipient to check back with the sender domain name um, record. So the signature can be generated from the email service provider and similar to sender policy framework, this, um, this will also ensure a greater deliverability rate once set up because the recipient uh, domain name uh, system receives like a green signal to um, receive your messages, to receive your emails. And the last one over here, but very important one, is the domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. <clears throat> This is a set of records that uses um, sender both 
uh, sender policy framework and the main keys identified mail um, to authenticate the emails and provide an assurance that there is no fraudulent activities are associated with it. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so this is a great tool to look for the email deliverability and understand how different providers uh, get and proceed your emails. So based, based on this data, you can receive um, the information about the del deliverability of your emails. The next thing is about warming up your account. This is a very important step that um, very frequently is being overlooked. And I would love to say here first that um, this should be a continuous process. So this shouldn't look like um, you've warmed up your account before starting your before launching your um, outreach campaign and after that you just stop to stop doing this <coughs> if you have an email account that is dedicated for outbound and you barely send something from this account then it's obviously seem a very unusual activity once you try to send something like 300 or 500 mails per day at once so, of course, this looks suspicious to any email provider. And the key is to organize your outreach in a way that provides you fluent and a steady flow of outgoing messages. So warming up techniques can be followed by sending emails, if you are doing it manually, to your colleagues, to your friends, um, relatives, basically whoever. The thing is that you should send messages and get some replies um, in revert. So the idea is to create a communication that increases your account's deliverability rate and also it influenced the daily email sending limit. Uh, for our, our own outreach campaigns, we connected all our newly created accounts uh, to the warming tool, uh, which is called Warm Up Inbox, and just leave them to warm up until we are ready, we were ready to launch our campaign. So we started from 10 emails per day and the peak was uh, something about 40 emails per day. After this, you can start um, with the cold outreach. So we have done this for multiple purposes. First of all, this helps to maximize the chances of the deliverability for the emails. Secondly, it prevents your outreach from ending up in the spam folder of the recipients. Also, it keeps the IP reputation of the domain high and it helps also to identify us if we had any placement or delivery issues uh, before we just try to you know, scale our outreach uh, to a full capacity. <coughs> so we are moving right now to the next part. And the next part is about finding the right contacts. Uh, and basically I connected this to a way to increase your open rate because the quality of your prospect list uh, influence directly your bounce rate and your open rate, of course. I will explain this in a few minutes. So building, basically building the list uh, is all about finding the right audience who would respond ideally to your emails and, uh, of course, in ideal picture to your offer. Without a well-defined prospecting process, you'll be limited to sending your cold, limit, uh, to, uh, your cold emails to contacts who have no requirement or which is even worse to a very poor base with a bad, you know, like uh, uh, data quality. Before you get started with the build, with building your prospect list, you need to identify who your best customers are and create your ICP, ideal customer profile. I won't stop here for long because we have really plenty of information on this topic in our uh, blog and also in our previous webinar and in our videos, you are welcome to um, just refresh your memory by visiting our blog and visiting our YouTube channel. Just want to highlight here that you need to collect the, the data um, about your existing customers or alternatively just um, create an ideal portrait uh, of the customer who would be uh, potentially the best fit for your business and just come up with as many attributes on those customers as you could, um, because the more information you have, the more targeted your list will be and the more personalized you can make your email. So the more you know about them, the more accurate you can be with your targeting. This is just as simple as that. 
And the basic questions you may ask yourself, they are like really uh, well known, such as like company size, um, industry, um, company location, the technologies they use, and plenty of other information. So when once you have your ICP generally defined, it's time to define a buyer persona and ask yourself a question, who makes purchasing decision within company? Because you will definitely need to scrap uh, the titles of different people because you won't be sending your, um, I would say, sales offer to HR department. You definitely need to know who exactly um, knows per, uh, makes purchasing decisions, for example, within sales department. So there are two ways uh, basically about building a prospect list. The first one is just to outsource it to lead generation agency. In this case, you just simply need to give them your ICP and they will do all the job on their own. And the second one is to build it yourself, which we'll be covering today. So if you want to build the list yourself, you have two options. You can do this manually or you can alternatively, you can use an automation tool, uh, which, will, which will be much easier of course for you, but we will cover today both ways and we'll start with the building the prospect list manually. Uh, so basically here are four main steps to build a prospect list manual. The first one is to find companies that fit your ICP. The second one is find decision makers. The third is find email addresses. And the last one is about validate your data. The thing is that each of this step, it requires uh, some kind of tool to use during. So let's speak about the first stage, about the uh, finding the companies that fit your ideal customer portrait. So the first step to finding the companies that fit your ICP uh, is to find the data source uh, that contains the information on your target, target companies. So you need to find websites uh, that would let you find companies based on certain attributes, like the size of the company, the industry they operate, number of the workers, the employees, etc. So the data source will depend on the type uh, of the company you sell to. So just think what type of companies are you selling your products or services to? So if you happen to sell to startup companies, for example, then websites like AngelList, Gust, or Crunchbase um, would be an ideal choice. So the aforementioned websites, they provide you with the, some basic yet uh, essential filters to find your ideal companies within them. If you are looking for uh, software companies, then online reviews websites like GitHub, Captera, G2, Product Hunt, they aggregate software products and apps, um, so in this case, this would be a perfect choice for you. You can filter those companies based on product category, geography, location, um, and other useful filter options. Because basically there are plenty of the tools on the market, you just need to find out the industry you'd be looking for uh, your customers in and how many filters do you need. This would determine would you stick to free solutions or to paid ones. And one attribute of the prospects that it isn't it's not easily available on the internet is the technology they use. Um, for instance, let's say that the company is, use, uh, is being used um, outreach IO, for example, uh, and this is your potential customer. So how can you tell whether a company really use the outreach IO? Do they use this tool? So you can basically get this information through different tools as well. Uh, simply by installing different Chrome extensions like similar tag, what runs, Hunter tag lookup, also built with, and there is a free Chrome extension from um, Lead Feeder also, so basically plenty of them. Uh, those tools let you find technologies used on any website and with it uh, just, just with a simple click, I would say. And some complex tools like ZoomInfo, uh, they allow you to find this information as an additional filtering level. Another stage is to find the decision makers that are associated with those companies. And um, it's time to find, the, once you have the list of the companies that you would like to sell your um, offer, your proposition to, it's time to build the list of the decision makers within those companies. So below are some ways, um, most common ways to find the decision makers. The first one and the most effective yet is LinkedIn. So 
This is by far the most powerful source um, to find accurate and up-to-date information about any particular, any business really. And with the powerful um, search, both free and paid, you can accurately find almost like any data associated with any business. Uh, also, if you have bot sales navigator, for example, you have even greater amount of options to search through. So you have more filters and you have more uh, opportunities for leads finding because you have greater amount of people available uh, through one search, not 1000, but 2500. Uh, another way, very obvious as well, uh, is to find contacts on the About Us page on the company's website. Almost every website, uh, they have a section about us, uh, and sometimes uh, it, really displayed, it really displays not only contacts um, and the general email, but also uh, employees uh, with, the with their titles and even short biography regarding them. So this is also a good way, for example, to find out who makes who in the company. And the third one, uh, this is a good old Google. So you can try to find people uh, from the necessary company and read more about their role and their needs maybe by simply using the Google and trying to find some related publications, article, news, basically anything. So you just um, tape in the name of the person, uh, no, sorry, not the name, you just tape in the name of the company and just trying to look through all the news, all the related publications. So in this case, you may find out something really interesting, um, including decision makers in this company and in the department you are interested with. Um, another stage is to find and validate email addresses of your prospects. So once you have um, a list of ideal companies and decision makers, uh, it's time to find their email addresses. There are plenty of email finders too you can use uh, in order to find the email address of the decision maker. Um, they both are free and paid, it depends on your needs. So if you would like to find emails for, um, of individuals within some particular company, uh, you could use a tools like, uh, I call them guessing tools. It's like uh, Hunter.io, MailHunter, AnyLeads, Walla, Norbert, etc. So just yet, uh, all you have to do is just to simply input the company domain and the tool will list all the email addresses of the employees along with the, their names and jobs. So if you can nail the email address of the decision maker in this way, uh, there are also other um, tools on the market that can provide you with the email addresses according to different filters. So just research your opportunities uh, well. So this could be like databases like Lead Genius, Data Nice, Solidify. So basically a lot of databases. Uh, they all differ by the number of the contacts available and by the number of the filters available. And also, of course, by the price. So your task here is just to define how many contacts would you like to get. Uh, would you stick to a paid, uh, paid or free solution in this case? So basically you have to research um, this information really well prior considering to buy something. And what we also need to do here is to validate the email address of your prospect because um, the email, um, the validity of the email directly related to the, um, to your bounce rate, uh, which is naturally, it will worsen your reputation if you have quite high uh, bounce rate. So you should simply remove a context from, context from your list in case if you can't find a valid email address for them. So because the success of your email outreach campaign is totally depends on the quality of your prospect list. Um, just use a tool, uh, tool or tools like Zero Bounce, uh, Debounce, Hunter, Verifier, or similar to verify your email data. So basically this looks like this. You just upload your uh, prospect list into this tool and they just uh, finding out other email addresses valid or not. In our case, we used a built-in uh, validator in Zoom Info, uh, Snow IO, and our own uh, in-house solution for this. Well, uh, building a prospect list using special tools, and I mean here completely automated tools, this is the fastest and the easiest way to build your prospect list. Uh, the process of finding the companies, finding the decision makers, finding their data and validating it 
it just reduced to not single, but maybe two or three steps within this, uh, this particular tool. Uh, and you can get lookalike prospects by simply running your ICP through those prospects, um, like fi finding tools. In other words, by giving the attributes of your ideal customers, you will have uh, a list of the prospects that match it like, in a best way. Uh, for instance, if you want to reach to CEO of companies, um, I don't know, making some kind of software located in the United States with a number of employees, not more than 50. So you can just simply put this information um, as a filter in your prospect finding tool. And in this case, you will get uh, the full list of the prospects with their data, with their titles, with their additional information there um, that is available for them, and also with their emails, phones, etc. So basically just two steps needed. Uh, there are several similar tools that provide you with such opportunities. Um, there are ZoomInfo, Lusha, Wiza, Apollo IO, Datanice, and plenty of others. And when it comes to find the ideal prospecting tool, I again um, want to highlight that um, you have to define your goals prior and you have to define what level of information do you need for your prospect um, for your prospecting. Uh, because typically you only need a very basic data like um, email, um, maybe title and name of the company. But sometimes if you need some, um, I would say more precise information, maybe about the funding this companies, th those companies received, or maybe the particular technology they use. In this case, you should also research um, does this function is presented in the CRM, uh, sorry, in the uh, prospect finding tool that you are currently considering. So we've been using ZoomInfo. Uh, this is one of the largest databases. Uh, it is cross-referenced to get return over 300 unique uh, data points, um, starting from very standard um, information like company size, um, different attributes related to, to the company, and also to very advanced insights. And there are also, which honestly say we we never been used to full capacity, uh, but there are also a few, like I would say disadvantages um, because the data in ZoomInfo is frequently outdated. For example, people do not work anymore in the company mentioned. Uh, so therefore their email address is not valid or we simply have autoresponder from them. And also, um, at a certain point, we came to a situation where uh, the quality of the email addresses, the quality of the contacts became worse. Uh, a lot of unverified contacts lowered the general amount uh, of the email addresses available. And the third disadvantage, it's really pricey. So yeah, I'd recommend you to check tools on the market, just compare them and um, you should choose accordingly to your, to your capacity, to your needs. Uh, what I want to mention over here is that the best place actually to find um, quality contacts for your outreach campaigns uh, and increase your deliverability and open rates um, is about finding contacts on LinkedIn. Why on LinkedIn? Because the data there is almost always up to date. People update their profiles very frequently, their jobs, their um, achievements, everything basically. So the data is very... Uh, is much more complete than on other platforms because you have not only name, person and company, but you also have interest, languages, um, different achievements, a lot of information basically. Uh, and the data is really easy to extract because uh, you can install like, I don't know, Chrome extensions and you can scrap this data directly from LinkedIn using their own search. Um, this is the point where um, after the experience with the Doom Info, we came to the platforms that have been using um, LinkedIn um, as the main data source for their database like Apollo IO and uh, Snow IO. So we've been using those solutions um, as well and the quality of contacts uh, was really great. So at this point, once you have uh, list of the companies, list of the prospect built with the all necessary um, data that you need for your outreach. 
um, you need to reach out to those decision makers and to sell, in order to sell your products and services. And this is where the sales automation platforms or sales intelligence platforms um, come into the picture. So once you have all your prospects imported into your CRM, uh, you'll be able to send personalized messages, uh, follow-ups, of course, you will be able to scan a series of emails and uh, do a lot of additional stuff, uh, not manually, but using this automated service. As I mentioned before, we've been using Outreach IO for this purpose, um, but um, just like this tool does not provide you with the built-in database. So it's not the fully sales intelligence platform. Uh, and you have to do this separately in our case. So again, um, if you are considering a solution on the market that would be able to cover all your needs, um, just uh, keep in mind what exactly purposes would you like to meet with it so you can research it uh, properly. And we are moving from the solutions to interesting, um, interesting topic within our today's conversation. So what basically what affects email deliverability? And if your emails go to spam or they are mm, just simply undeliverable, um, of course, this is bad for you because it decreases your, um, your metrics, your open rate, your deliverability rate, and moreover, and which even worse, you lose your business opportunities. Um, this is why you have to know the main points and know how to prevent uh, getting your emails getting into spam. So, which is basically quite a common problem. Um, let's speak about the main factors that affect your email deliverability. So, the first and important one is the message infrastructure health, which we basically, um, th this will have obviously huge impact on whether messages can be delivered. Um, and we have covered the main, I would say, um, health factor checks at the beginning of our conversation and the tech part. Um, the second one is engagement. So your recipient's engagement is being evaluated according to the number of different actions that your prospect do with your email. So the number of the clicks, shares, um, unsubscribes, spam compliance, other activities they are counting. So typically um, positive signals are clicks, shares, uh, forwarded messages, also messages that get replies to and messages that were opened. And of course, if something, um, if you had some clicks within the body of the message and negative signals, they include ignored messages, messages deleted without being opened and also naturally messages that were marked as uh, spam and spam complaints are very significant negative signal even a small percentage of spam complaints can lead to your poor deliverability. So, um, for example, even 0.2% of spam uh, complaints are considered as high. Uh, the, sec the next one is sender history and filtering, which is related to the previous one, to the engagement also. So, um, the sender reputation is being calculated in different ways from filter to filter, but the idea is pretty the same. The reputation uh, of the sender, it includes different parameters, like the source of the message. Um, it includes the, for example, IP of the, um, the sender's IP address and the domain. Uh, the behavior of the, of the sender in the past, it includes also the number of the messages that were sent per unit in time. Remember, we were speaking about uh, the limits per hour and per day. So in this case, they're also counted uh, for the history and whether there was messages they were considered suspicious, for example. Of course, the content of the message is also uh, taken into consideration and even feedback from the customer, from the recipients that hit uh, market a spam button. So, for example, if the if somebody is sending 1,000 emails uh, per day, um, in this case, the sender may be flagged as suspicious in case if he just suddenly start to send up to 10,000 emails per day. So this will also be um, written in the history of this particular sender. And also the, um, the sender that tries to send 
um, messages with some questionable or spammy content, they also will be triggered by the filters. And this may be counted into history of the sender as well. Uh, another interesting thing, uh, probably the, one of the most one, um, is about the uh, message content. So the message content, uh, basically, I think that you've heard and read a lot about this. And this is a key influence on how deliverable is your message uh, for a variety of reasons. Because the, um, your emails can get into spam um, according to basically a lot of, of triggers. So just related to the content. And first of all, if you're not addressing your recipient um, personalized in a personalized way, so you simply include a very generic, um, generic things like, hey, friend, etc., just not saying his or her name. So this is uh, a bad signal for this is a bad signal for your email. Also the same with the misleading subject lines. You know that everyone sometimes receive messages with the, I know, caps lock, urgent or something like this. So misleading subject lines are also um, bad for your karma in this case. Uh, basically, uh, sorry, um, excluding the unsubscribe button and... Uh, there are like discussions uh, on this point. Uh, does the sender need to include an uh, unsubscribe button or exclude it? Because in case if you have include the unsubscribe, it may seem more generic. It may seem not personalized. But um, the researchers show that it's better to add the unsubscribe button into your um, email. While Because um, when you will send, for example, a fifth or a fourth follow-up to a sender, uh, and he does not have a time or he does not have a desire to send you back email and inform you that he would like to unsubscribe from your um, messaging, from your emails, then the easiest way for him or her to avoid messaging with you is just to simply hit mark a spam flag. So in this case, we are just playing, you know, just to avoid this. And it is better sometimes to include unsubscribe button and avoid being marked as spam. Uh, also, what you should avoid, uh, this is capital text, too much of the capital text, and overused punctuation, and of course, um, interesting, strangely formatted fonts. Uh, this also look a little bit spammy. So the links, about the links, um, the less links you have in your text, the better. Um, if you really need to send a link, um, just make sure that it is uh, secured. And uh, because you know that there are many links associated to spam. Uh, too much uh, image content like videos or um, pictures, it also, it is, not an, it is not healthy for the email. And from our own experience, what I would say that uh, there was a time we've been experimenting with the video content in the messages. So we've been using um, a tool called Drift, which allow you to you know, to make short videos, personalized videos, and send them uh, via email. So an interesting thing that the deliverability, uh, sorry, the open rate and the deliverability of those uh, messages, it was lower than the ma regular messages, than the regular emails, without a, just with a plain text. The reply rates were a little bit higher, but the chance that this particular message will get into the folder, into the main folder of the recipient, was a little bit lower. So I would suggest to experiment in this case, just maybe you can try to play with the images with a small amount uh, of your audience. So include different GIFs, um, videos, images, and see how does it work and how does it affect your um, deliverability and open rate. Attachments, uh, sending attachments, all not always, but oftenly associated with phishing and different suspicious activity. So just try to avoid sending any attachments. If you want to share something, just try to share it via link, but not send it as attachment. And of course, spam words. Um, there are plenty of tools that allow you to check your emails for spam words, like Mailshake and a lot, a lot of others. So I'd recommend to test yourself at least at the beginning and check the messages prior to, to sending them. And also, uh, what um, influence the what influence the email's deliverability is, of course, the content uh, contact 
quality. Uh, so if two up to 10% of your emails get bounced back, so for example, you're sending 100 emails, and in this case, from two to 10 of your emails are getting bounced, uh, your emails may be stop, stop delivered. The quality of your prospect list, it influences directly your bounce rate. So make sure to validate all email addresses before launching a campaign. Um, and this is I'm, this, the, the point I mentioned before. This is also our experience, for example, with the Zoom info. At a certain point, we reached the situation where almost 50% of the searched contacts uh, were of a poor quality. And we had to remove like 50% of our prospect list prior to adding them to the campaign. And this was basically the main reason we started to look at um, LinkedIn-based databases. So yes, contact quality, the quality of your list is one of the also key factors that influence your email deliverability. And uh, moving forward, um, basically setting up your account and having all the technical stuff done is just a 50% of success. Um, another 50 is about your contact list and about the quality of your prospect list. So based on our experience, I would recommend you to pay attention to the following points. Uh, the rule number one, just have a human behavior, have a human behavior. Um, what do I mean here is that if, if you can send a fewer amount of the emails, that would be better for you. So if you can stand under 120 emails per day, that would be perfect. But in case, if you absolutely need to send higher amount of emails, first of all, set a delay between them. <clears throat> Sorry. Set a delay between each email um, because this helps, um, you know, to have this pause and to uh, help your emails land in the main inbox. <coughs> Sorry for that. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, what I mean. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> what I mean here is that <clears throat> uh, people do not send <clears throat> thousands of emails per day. So just try to keep your um, behavior as more human as you can. <clears throat> Next, <clears throat> personalize your emails. Um, this helps you to increase your open rate, um, click rate, reply rate, and of course it will influence your final conversions. Um, Behind that, it plays also a strong role regarding email reputation and deliverability in your case. Uh, why? Because when you personalize, you don't send the same email, the same bunch of emails. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> because when you personalize your emails, you don't send the same bunch of the emails <clears throat> To your recipients. Anyway, um, make sure that uh, make sure that your message contains the information that is relevant to a particular prospect, like name, his title, um, etc. And ex just make sure that your list, a list of your recipients, it contains only people that would be interested in your offer. I mean, like relevant titles, um, departments, industries, etc. So you have to use the approach that allow your prospects to feel selected and of course if you send different emails at least different with him names and titles etc um, this will also be healthier for your reputation as an email sender <coughs> um, another thing is about sending follow-ups uh, just try to avoid sending more than seven follow-ups. Uh, I recommend to stay within three to five. Why? Because at a certain point, uh, I covered this before, your recipient just simply would be bored with your emails, with the massive attack from your site. So it's more likely they uh, will just hit mark a spam button or will just um, answer you unsubscribe. So this can be triggered for the prospect. So try to stay within three to five follow-ups during your email campaign. For example, in our case, this was quite efficient. Or 
alter alternatively, we have another approach. You can uh, set longer delays between messages. So once we had a sequence uh, with seven steps, with seven follow-ups, and in this case, the seventh follow-up, the seventh follow-up was being sent on 21st day since the first touch. And surprisingly, it has really huge amount of uh, opens and answers and reply rate. So in this case, this means that you are not triggering um, your prospect with very frequent communication. So the longer delays between, uh, sometimes it makes sense to make longer delays between different messages between the follow-ups. Another point is paying attention to the email content. Uh, exclude, try to exclude attachments, minimize images, uh, check the text of your email for the spam words. This is like um, alphabet before, um, before doing um, any email outreach. And also use minimum formatting. Try to make your um, text uh, plain. Uh, and make sure you avoid aggressive punctuation and all in capital letters. You may also experiment with the video content. I encourage to do uh, this, but just try to, um, to work with a small portion of your audience in this case, just to check the conversions and to check the open and deliverability rates. Uh, check the quality of your contact and check your bounce rate. Um, email bounce of two types um, may occur, soft and hard bounce. So soft bounce happens if the recipient mailbox is full um, or if there is any technical issue on the side of the recipient. But to my personal experience, um, I, didn't, I didn't have an experience with doing this, so I never got a message like this. Uh, alternatively, hard bounce occurs when the email address of your recipient uh, does not exist. So multiple soft bounces can also lead to a hard bounce. And of course, any bounce is bad for your reputation um, as an email sender. Um, those both type of bounces, they affect the deliverability of your emails. And basically your task here is to decrease the bounce rate Uh, and you can, the easiest way to do this is to be more selective with the contact you, um, you're, you're finding for your campaigns. So, <coughs> uh, basically, as I mentioned before, if two to 10% of your emails, um, are getting into, are getting bounced, then this is a reason to suspend your email account. So just make sure to verify, um, all email contacts that you are putting into your uh, CRM, into your cold, um, cold outreach campaign, uh, because the bounce rate is related directly to the quality of your prospect list. And um, regarding the unsubscribe uh, link, um, it's up to you, of course, because as I mentioned before, there are um, a lot of debates on this topic. So should you include or exclude this, uh, this button or this link from your email? but I would rather recommend you to um, experiment as well. And in case if you would like to make your um, email more personalized, you may exclude it from the, from the email, but just make sure that you are constantly tracking the number of the unsubscribes uh, that you receive um, from your recipients, um, unsubscribed emails, as, uh, I mean, and also check um, the health of your Mm, I would say your reputation in, t in terms of uh, how many times are you being marked as, as spam? Because, for example, if you are triggering your prospects with your emailing and they constantly uh, mark you as spam, then naturally uh, you will get into blacklists. So in this case, it's up to you. So I'd recommend you to start um, to start with the testing and to see what works better for you, what works better for the health of your messages. And what I also recommend strongly is the A-B testing of your campaign. Um, this is basically what we've done. And we had around uh, 30 sequences written. Um, so we can define we, what, what sequence works better for which purpose. So um, basically, A-B testing of your email campaigns can inform you about the different types of the email deliverability, about the different open rates of the emails, uh, about the efficiency of usage of personalized images and videos in the emails, and about the reply rates, of course, in your email. And basically, 
the smaller list, um, the, the smaller prospect list is in your company, the more opportunities you have to diversify your email copy and then maybe advance it, etc. So I'd say that campaign uh, with up to 1000 prospects is ideal for um, for testing. So in this case, you still have some room for improvement. And if you can see that your campaign does not bring <clears throat> the necessary results, you can stop it, rewrite it, maybe bring it to more advanced level. Uh, what kind of uh, points I would recommend you to play with during your outreach? This is, of course, the ICP. So this is the different. Uh, this is about the different titles within the company. So you can uh, craft your message according to different title and according to different departments within company. Uh, also, this is about different pain points. So in my personal experience, uh, what we have done, um, we try to um, divide our prospect list into different groups, united by some specific pain points specific for this particular group. And our emails, they were concentrated and wrapped around this particular pain point. And it was interesting to uncover the results. Uh, how does the, the particular email with the uh, solution, how we can solve their problems, work against other group, you know? Uh, so what I recommend also um, to, to experiment with is the email um, subject line vari variability. So you can try different subject lines and see what works better for your open rate. Because uh, alone with the quality of the context, the subject line also influence the open rate very, um, I would say, significantly. Uh, also, what is interesting to work with is choosing the different time for sending your emails. And my strong recommendation to you, just try not to uh, follow the advices on the internet that, you know, it is better to send all emails on Monday, um, 10 a.m., for example, or on Tuesday, 1 p.m. Uh, just try to find your own uh, best time because, again, uh, if you will schedule all emails, for example, for one particular day, then in this case, you will simply uh, exceed your limits. And uh, this will influence badly on the deliverability of your emails. This is just one point. And the second point that it is better to experiment on your own and track the best uh, open and reply rates directly in your CRM so you can see exactly uh, what works better, what times works better in your case. So just try to to guess it on your own. Just not guess, but um, be, of course, um, find it out based on the data you have. But just try not to follow those advices, uh, you know, on the internet to push everything on Monday or on Wednesday. Um, about the multimedia, as I already mentioned, I strongly suggest you to play with this. Uh, to play with the GIFs, to play with the videos also, but just try to work with the very small audiences from your prospect list because um, in case if this will affect badly your deliverability, then it is, um, again, it's very, uh, it's better to, to have this issue on a scale up to 50 prospects than on a scale up to 10,000 prospects. Uh, so I guess we are almost run out of time and i wanted to thank you once again for being here um and apologize for um for my today's issues with the throat and thank you once again for being here um thank you for your attention and if we have any questions i'm happy to answer but if not um you're welcome to watch this webinar uh, on our youtube it will be um, it will be published, um, I guess, today or maybe tomorrow. So in case if you would like to refresh something in your memory, you're always welcome. And I would like also to join you. Um, I would like also you to uh, join and welcome in our communities on LinkedIn and Facebook uh, for more sales tips and tricks. And we have our next live event on January 27th. And just make sure to, to register um, because we prepare some really great news uh, about closely. We prepare a great topic for you on January. So just make sure not to miss it. And okay, no questions. Thank you, everybody. And have a pleasant Friday evening. Bye.